So welcome, Friday night, shining your light on shadows. We've been talking about archetypes the last few weeks, and I was talking to somebody today. It's not the labels that we give these archetypes. And archetypes are part of our shadows. Archetypes are things that we are. They're not labels. They're not descriptions given by other people. That's the outside world impinging on us. As, so, as within, so without. It's not the other way around. So take this archetype work with a grain of salt. Not a grain of salt. Feel what's right for you. Even the labels, the king, the warrior, the lover, the, the magician, they're labels given to us by other people. They might be yours, they might not be yours. So practically, I've talked about, I don't want to go into them too much about describing, I want to get into the practicalities because it took a bit long last week. And uh, let me just share this page. What have we got here? That's what we're after. She sounds share. Okay. So we've already looked at the practicalities of using um what are we doing here? There we go. We've already looked at the practicalities of the feminine archetypes. <clears throat> so what we're looking at here now. Is the masculine archetype. So last week we looked at. Uh, let me skip to do this. First of all, you've, you've got the the archetype in their fullness: the king, the warrior, the lover, the magician, and you've got them in their shadows. These are the immature parts of how, who we are. Now, these archetypes are behaviors that we might see in other people. They're behaviors that we exhibit, and it, it's very unusual to be in your archetype in its fullness especially when an event happens most of the time we're we're behaving we're not conscious of anything we're asleep if you like we're not conscious of anything we're behaving and we exhibit these certain characteristics that Jung put into these four boxes or 16 boxes depending on how much how deep you want to go into it we're just going to look at the four significant archetypes we're never going to play or we're very suddenly going to play in the archetype in its fullness we're going to be drifting somewhere in this triangle, if you're looking on the screen there, between the active poles of the shadow archetypes and the archetype in its fullness. Now, shadows, because we're unaware of these, this character they're presenting. Personal dis and personal development, you become aware of what you're turning up as. But that's all it is, personal development. It's becoming aware of who you're turning up as. Now, the big step, the next step, and the biggest step, I think, is actually turning up as who you need to be, who you want to be. Rather than reacting from the outside, being the person you think that others need you to be, or being the person that you think others see you as, it's turning up authentically is who you need to be. And as you sit in that a bit more comfortable with it, you'll start to come out of the shadows. This is where shadow integration comes in. You can't just sit in these archetypes in their fullness. You're going to sit somewhere in that in that triangle. You're going to sit somewhere, take attributes of the, the archetype, the shadow part of the archetype, and the shadow part, and, and the, the polar, positive and negative polar extremes of the shadows, and, and the archetype in its fullness. So the easiest way to get hold of this is just to sit and recognize who you are turning up as. The questions the driving wheels of, of our lives. The questions that we ask also relate to the quality of our life, but it's not the questions. It's how much we hold ourselves accountable to those questions. So when you're meditating on who was I being in that situation? Who was I being in that event? Being honest with, your, with yourself. This is holding yourself accountable. All right, let's go on. So King Warrior, we did last week. This week, we're going to look at Magician Lover. So the Magician. And the two shadow poles of this are the Manipulator and the Innocent. Now, we've also gone over what these what all these shadows are, what the archetypes and their fullness are. What I wanted to talk about this week was actually practically. So how you can apply being the Magician and some of the... Some of the techniques that you can use to develop this archetype 
So the magician is the sort of person that's going to, the magician is the person that's going to embrace authenticity. They're going to be transparent. So <clears throat> if we can say the light, let me just put that on there. Just let me check in here. I see my. It's just. There we go. Maybe I put this on on speaker. Anyway. <clears throat> there seems to be more people on the Facebook group as well. Anyway. I'm not quite sure if the Facebook group's actually running properly. So a few people here. Anyway, so the magician. If the sort of character that's going to turn up is you're looking at being authentic. You're looking so at the magician. If the sort of, you're looking at somebody that's being authentic, somebody that's being transparent. So the light magician. Somebody that's portraying the characteristics of being the magician and their fullness is somebody that's going to be genuine. They're going to be transparent. <clears throat> going to be open with people, comfortable, friendly. They're going to be sharing. As opposed to somebody who's sitting a little bit more into their shadow magician, the innocent. What did we say there? The innocent and the manipulated. They're the two shadows. Somebody that's sitting in there. The shadow magician is somebody that's going to be recognizing the vulnerabilities and their fears. And this is where becoming aware of who I turn up as, noticing my volume of uh, vulnerabilities and, share, and fears, somebody that's looking at moving into their magician and their fullness is someone that's going to acknowledge these, these fears. Someone that's going to recognize them, sit with them, but still work through guiding people to, guiding clients if you're a coach, but guiding people in a relationship to express themselves, be more open, be more genuine and transparent. Now, I could do a whole session on holding the space. Now, that magician is somebody that can hold the space. And that isn't giving advice especially. It can be just sitting with the person. So noticing, does that feel, does that make you feel uncomfortable? Why does it make you feel uncomfortable? These are traits that the magician would a notice and would be working towards being comfortable holding the space. That Stephen Covey line, seek first to understand and then be understood comes up here. The magician is somebody that is allowing everybody else to express themselves. They're holding the space. In addition, somebody that, that understands there's a balance of the boundaries. So you've got that boundaries between compassion and holding themselves to be true. You don't want to just fall over and be a wet fish as a magician. That would be a shadow magician. <clears throat> you see, you know how to be compassionate, but also holding boundaries. It's surprising how difficult that is to understand boundaries, especially when you're in, if you're in a coach, if you're in a training situation, if you're in a relationship where you're going into an interpersonal level. You want to be compassionate. The magician, one of, the, one of the techniques, characteristics of the magician is being compassionate, but you also want to be able to hold the boundary. So understanding that difference, holding the boundary while being compassionate. The shadow bound, uh, the shadow magician, the manipulator, is somebody that's going to, he's going to notice the emotions, their emotions, but the person they're talking to, their their emotions, and, and is going to lean on them, is going to manipulate them. Is I was talking today about being hold, holding people accountable, holding them accountable, pushing on their emotions, holding them accountable to, to by manipulating their emotions. So the magician is somebody that is compassionate but knows where the line is. The, the magician is somebody that can transform, can facilitate transformation. 
that really comes to a lot of transformation comes down to holding the space. To hold the space, <clears throat> and this is without judgment holding the space, so that so that they themselves or the person that they're relating to, the, the, the client, the, the trainee, the person that they're talking to, can go into a deeper reflection, can start to explore. It's really hard, and the ego comes out when you're doing this as a facilitator, to not put your two cents in, just allow the person to, to talk. It's quite often said, you know, the, the, the people, that, that the best relationships are when you aren't saying anything. And the person that's the person that's talking is expressing themselves. You're great. You're actively listening. Is feels listened to. Feels safe to do that. Fantastic race. Powerful way to build a relationship. It's challenging because you see your ego steps in. You want to tell your story. Allow them to tell their story. But also with boundaries knowing not to push them holding space is not asking the why question why causes a person to to start to feel judged and that's not a safe space that's overstepping a boundary that's pushing on the emotions that's trying to get an outcome for the client for the person that you're talking to trying to fix them Maslow says, if all you've got is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. How do you know what is what is actually going to fix them? Because you've done this and it works and it's worked every time I've used it. Well, yeah, in your map of the world, it's worked. But that's not being a magician in the fullness. That's being a magician that's sort of sitting, remember what I said, somewhere in that triangle, not quite the shadow, which is really an immature state. You know, you can expect children to sit in that state. But I mean, age and maturity are uh, <laughs> not compatible. They're not symbiotic. You can get older and not mature. So you, you tend to sit somewhere in that triangle, not in the shadow, but not necessarily in the fullness. What we're aiming for here, to be authentic, to be who you are in your fullness, is to be able to access when you need it unconsciously. Way back months ago, I was talking about conscious and competence, unconscious competence. It's it's stepping initially into that learning phase where you're consciously competent. When you're learning, when an event happens, what options do I have here? What systems, behaviors can I run? Learning what it is to be that archetype in their fullness. So learning that the magician in their fullness is going to hold that space, is going to create a safe space, is going to be compassionate, but it's also going to have the boundaries. And then recognizing if you're pushing your client, if you're manipulating the situation, no, well, that's a little bit more of the shadow. And from a personal perspective, as a magician, this is a magician is somebody that can get through all the, the waffle, the, the crap, the voices in our head and, and tap into their intuition. I suppose I, I, I did an article earlier this week about what is love, the different levels of love. If we think about Hawkins' levels of consciousness or the levels of values levels from spiral dynamics, at each of those different levels, you're going to perceive things differently. You're going to have a different world perspective, a different world view. If you like, we're going to love is a personal, love is a relationship, love can be physical, but at higher perspectives, love is all encompassing. And once we start to reach those sort of levels, then we can tap more easily into our intuition. And a magician is somebody that's tapping into their intuition. They know when to sit there in silence with the, with the person and hold the space. And then they know when they need to say something. But it doesn't come from the head, it comes from the heart, it comes from the gut, the intuition. Now, in the shadow, the archetype, there will be the awareness of frustration. There'll be that trying to do things, trying to put ideas forward when they're not actually coming from an intuitive state. So see this, the first part of self-development is self-awareness, and this is all about self-awareness. When I'm being intuitive, where is it coming from? Is it really emerging? 
thinking outside the box is really difficult to do because that's using your intuition. Almost impossible. You can only build a new house from the bricks from the old one. This is how the psyche works. It can only deal with what it knows. Building a new house from new bricks is building from intuition, from things it doesn't have access to. Quite a big step in consciousness, big step in self-awareness. So let's have a look at some of the, the, the ways that magician, let me just bring this page up a bit more. The magician can put themselves into, we start putting this into practice. Self-talk's a really good one for magicians. Noticing the self-talk. And if you want to look at some really good, a really good coaching training, that's some um, um, positive intelligence. Positive intelligence is all about listening to the voices in your head. You have the the judge, the, the major voice in, in your head, the one, that, the, the devil, if you like, the one that sits on your shoulder and creates all the problems for you. I'm not good enough. I'm not wealthy enough. I'm not wise enough, whatever it is. We, we, we have lots of the judges, the major one, but we have all sorts of other voices in our head that keep us down. Or more simplified, we could say the critic and the champion. So there's another voice in your head that's your champion. It's usually a lot quieter. It usually doesn't get its voice heard very much. The magician is somebody that needs to start to notice these voices. That self-talk that's going on. And work on that. Work on amplifying the positive voice. And notice... A, a, acknowledging but not taking on the negative voice the judge the critic again something that's not easy to do this is not a it's not a do this course and get the answer this is a journey so it's a it's a skill that, that comes up from time to time really useful for a for a magician and the journaling journaling is really important because as well as getting the stuff out of your head onto a piece of paper it allows you to notice patterns it allows you to be reflective and tapping into the magician's skills of intuition, compassion, it's noticing when these are happening. It's being reflective on these events that are happening during the day. Journaling meditation is really useful to observe, acknowledge, reflect on events. You know, normally we go around to sleep. Um, we run on automatic, we run on the systems. The, the unconscious knows this happens, this is what I do. You know, we, we get home, we get home and we can't remember how we got there. Simply because, can't remember how we got there, simply because we run on automatic. We do this most of the time. The journaling pulls that out so we get to look on what we've actually done. Now, we're running these unconscious systems. By being reflective, we start to integrate the shadows we start to be in a space where we can turn up as the person we need to be, not the person we are being. So we're starting to take control and we're only going to get to that state where we're starting to be reflective, where we're starting to recognise what's going on. So journaling and reflective writing. What happened today? What events happened today? What processes were going through my head? What was going on for me? Really useful um, exercise journaling journaling is something we should do every day is something you can do from different aspects and this particular journaling i'm looking at where we're looking at our shadows it's reflective writing notices what comes up for us in shadows nine percent of our communication is non-verbal and this is where being reflective we start to notice what's going on for us we start to notice the shadows <clears throat> Okay, let's go on to the next one. Let's go on to the lover. The fourth. Where are we? We're still sharing that, aren't we? Um, the magician, the lover. So the addict and the impotent. These are the two. Remember, we had the innocent there for the magician. The impotent. These are the shadow, the immature archetypes, if you like. The polar, the addict, and the impotent. So the lover. <clears throat> so 
if we're looking at integrating the shadow in, because what all this is about, all this practical experience, these skills that we can use are actually integrating our shadows in. If you like, a shadow needs to have the light shone on it. Once that happens, it's integrated, it's no longer a shadow. It becomes part of us. And to be authentic, we have to accept all the different parts of us. The light side and the dark side. Now, I'm hopefully in the next couple of weeks, I'll be interviewing different people about their aspects and their work in shadows. And one of the people I'm quite excited to be talking about is somebody that works with the golden shadow. Most of our shadows are golden. Most of our shadows are things that are going to, things that we've denied in ourselves. Things that are going to cause us to become more authentic. Oh, I think it's late in the day here. Their characteristics, their skills that we've suppressed, that we will be able to live out more fully our lives once we accept them. So, and this is why journaling is important in all of in, 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 in everything, because it's a, a big chunk of it. It's just being reflective, just starting to notice. If you like personal development, is becoming self-aware. This is journaling meditation is the next step in that journey of becoming more self-aware. So the lover is somebody that is looking at balancing passion and realism. They want to, a magician in their fullness is somebody that is embracing their passion, embracing dreams and desires, but just tinged with an awareness of, of, of realism. How do they see a dream? A dream without any practical action. <clears throat> just it remains a dream. And if we look at the lover, we look at the lover there, the addict, the impotent. A dream stays a dream because of the impotency, because of the lack of action. So a, a lover is somebody that, that embraces passion. They embrace dreams and desires with a tinge of realism to them. They set inspiring goals. If goals don't scare you a little bit, then they're not really big enough. And we go on to, I'll probably finish these this time these archetypes this time we'll go on to the next module and one of those is goals and it's quite fascinating really going to another level it's goals reinvented we call that module so if we're looking at the shadow here the shadow lover is somebody that's addressing unrealistic expectations they escape into their dreams so they're Still having the dreams there, but they're escaping into them. They're not tinging it with realism. They're not taking practical and achievable steps towards the school. This is someone that sets goals, and you know, I like to say they sort of put them on the shelf, help, shelf and leave them there till next year. They're not acting on them. So when you're talking to somebody and, and, they're, and they're expressing this, it's noticing what actions they're putting into place. A lover is somebody that embraces vulnerability. They embrace authenticity. <clears throat> authenticity is fascinating. It's that understanding that it's, I can explain. Authenticity is somebody that sees love from a bigger picture. Love is not about something or someone. Love is all embracing. But that also balances there with the vulnerability. So this touches a little bit on the, the magician, their fullness. The lover is somebody that's fostering a safe space of vulnerability. Whether it's through yourself, being honest to yourself, or with somebody that you're talking to, that you're in a relationship with, that you're interacting with, allowing them to be vulnerable. Subtly different to holding the space of the magician. All these archetypes are going to hold safe space, but they're going to hold them slightly differently. This is the magician, the, the lover is somebody that's holding the space for vulnerability so that the client feels comfortable expressing themselves, their true feelings and fears. Now, that could start off with you expressing yours, encouraging them that it's safe to express their true, authentic feelings, <clears throat> their hopes, their fears, in ju without judgment. I said earlier, why is a really is a really judgmental word. Why did that happen? Why did you do that? That's not holding a safe space. 
you can almost say that that's that's moving into the impotent again or, or actually actually the why question is probably a little bit more into the shadow warrior isn't it because it sounds might not be intended by you it's not it's not what you're saying doing it's the way it's being received and the way that the word is delivered causes are they judging me to come out in the person you're talking to So when we're talking about vulnerability and, and authenticity there, somebody that's a little bit more into the shadow is somebody that's going to look at um, rejection, self-doubt. These things are going to come up. So it's noticing when they do come up and, 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 and reframing is quite a good way of doing it, but noticing that authenticity is a strength, not a weakness. Okay, so there's shadow magician there is somebody that's noticing the fear of projection the fear of self-doubt those fears coming up so reframing that being authentic is, is their strengths so what is it that's calling that's causing that self-doubt the self-doubt itself is created by something so reframing it so this is really the love of the there is really with with vulnerability with authentic, authenticity is noticing it's noticing what's coming up, it's holding the space, it's active listening. Really what's going on, the, the self-doubt's the presenting issue, that's the, the voice on the shoulder that's being negative, what's really going on for the client, expressing your fears and vulnerabilities so that they feel safe, that they can, they can express theirs. And then if we look at some of the practical exercises, <laughs> So let me just bring this one up. So this journaling is quite interesting. So reflecting on some of the shadows that come up, some of the addictive tendencies. An addiction, remember, it's a shadow addict. It's a shadow aspect of the lover. Shadow aspect. Shadow aspect of the lover archetype. The addiction. So when they when a, when a person has addictive tendencies come up and that can be smoking obviously is the obvious one but it, it can be negative self-talk there can be all sorts of addictions that people that pulls people in that creates problems for how they're processing so journaling on their interactions their addictions their their tendency to do, to be to have addictive nature, to, to, to do things repetitively, excessively, shopping. Um, it can be overeating, it can be seeking attention, validation. Seeking validation is is, is, is an interesting one. So these are things to do, that reflect on, to journal, to reflect on, to notice. Okay, this is what I'm doing. Remember, self-development is about self-awareness. It's that first part of going to a dark place, if you like, to then instigate change there has to be some pain before we'll move the frog in the pot story comes up if you have a frog in a pot of water and you turn the heat on the frog will boil to death but if you throw a pot a frog into a pot of hot water it'll jump out when we sit in the pain long enough then we accept it, it becomes the norm so noticing addictive tendencies exploring triggers events happen and we're triggered it's exploring those sort of triggers this is exploring our shadows addictive natures noticing triggers that come up it's one of the techniques we can use to start exploring our shadow archetypes our immature archetypes some of the other ones i like this one embracing your inner muse so the visualization techniques that we can use so the lover archetype somebody that can tap into the inspiration can tap into creativity remember the magician was intuition the lover is creativity and inspiration what you can do do this when you're meditating is to just contemplate contemplate yourself as a muse as somebody that inspires others and when you're doing this type of meditation imagining yourself as a muse you're touching on all the five senses what you're seeing what you're hearing 
what you're smelling and tasting and feeling as well. Because feeling one of them. So visualization isn't just about visualizing. It's not just about the pictures. It's about all the other senses as well. And if you can tap into the taste, the smell, you know, I always, when I'm working with football players, it's going out onto the field and smelling the grass. They're actually much stronger, um, stronger visualizations than the image and what we're thinking, what we're processing. So what we're hearing and what we're smelling, maybe what we're tasting, these are, these are senses that can have much stronger results. So think about visualizing, going through a process of who you would be if you were being the magician in their fullness, the muse, when you're inspiring others. When you're creating that, when you're holding that space for a person to be creative. So that's the lover, some of the practical things. And if you're interested subscribe so that you learn more about this on my youtube channel subscribe so that you get to listen to the or get notifications of future um videos i'm doing but also put a comment down below and i'll send you the hard copy pdf of all of these the i'm just touching on a few of these points at the moment but there's half a dozen that we can go through quick easy exercises to learn a little bit about some of the practical applications of these different archetypes and i'll send you the whole masculine and feminine practical applications anyway i'm going to wrap it up because i've been going longer than i wanted to go i hope that's been helpful and we'll go on next week to the next one i think no actually we've got a little bit more to do here because we've got systems cost constellations dynamic archetypical dynamic constellations <clears throat> there's a little bit more that we can look at an archetype so the archetypes are a big part. So I run a an a, um, emerging shadows training, which uh, covers which has six modules, and one of those modules is archetypes, and it's really important. This isn't about the personal development. These are your four predominant archetypes in their fullness. While it is partly that, it's also partly about the shadows, simply because. Let me just stop that share. Simply because it's easier. It's easier to tell you about the archetypes and their fullness, but we don't sit in those archetypes and their fullness. They're in their shadows. That we sit, maybe the immature shadow, but usually it's somewhere in that triangle, not on it, not in our shadows, not in the immature nature of the archetype, but also not in the archetype and their fullness. So I spend a whole module on exploring the archetypes, their shadows how we move around them and how they interrelate with each other. Now, also our shadows, what I've just explained here, are labels that somebody outside has given to me. So it's that first recognition of who I'm turning up as. Now, to be the person you need to turn up as, a really powerful way of doing that is, well, first of all, overcoming the shadow archetypes, evolving yourself so that you're not in those immature states as much. So when an incident happens, you're more likely to tend towards unconsciously, really unconscious competence, unconsciously tend towards behaving as the archetype in their fullness. So that you're not you're you're, you're not acting as the, the archetype in the, the immature state. And that next step is, is creating the act proactively, creating the archetypes that you need to be. So being the person you need to be in that situation. So turning up as you would like to be. So that's actually on the full training. This is just the podcast. I'm just telling you a little bit about it. So sign up somewhere down there. Subscribe so you can get to listen to all these videos. Come along next week and I'll explore archetypes just one more time. It's been going on for a bit now. And uh, I hope that was helpful. We will see you next week. Thanks, Samina. Who else? Can't tell who else. Nobody's talking to me on Facebook today. All right. Thank you very much. See you next week. Bye.